Hello everybody, one more time. My name is Alex Centeno with Mercados Interactive Partners located in the Research Triangle area in North Carolina. Our focus is to help businesses of all sizes make more money through the use of a strategic website design, custom digital media development, and web marketing. For more information, you can contact us at 888-525-117 or visit us on the web at Mercados.com. Today, we're going to be talking about advanced color correction in Photoshop. And... Uh, if you follow our channel, you probably have seen that we've done a lot of uh, beginner style color correction um, and Photoshop in general. So this one's going to be a little bit more advanced uh, to give you uh, something to, uh, to advance as a digital media artist. So let's take a look. I have here an image from Stock Exchange, and um, basically what we're going to do is that uh, we're going to be color correcting this image. And as you know, snow photography is very, very complex already because it introduces casts that are very difficult in the uh, in the sensor of the camera already uh, because it's very difficult to measure the amount of light uh, properly. And so you're going to have to color correct it in an advanced way uh, if you're taking a lot of photography in the snow. So um, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to change it to 32-bit mode. Um, and the reason is because, uh, let me show you here the histograms. And uh, if we take a look, all the information of this image is in the highlights, most of it just a little bit here, probably the guys here. Um, and as you can see here, that information is right there. But for the most part, everything is in the highlights zone. Um, and so we don't really want to destroy the information because it's already in a very small portion of our histogram. Um, let me show you something. If I actually was not to change my mode and remain in 8-bit mode per channel, and I was to color correct with curves, for example. So uh, black point, white point, uh, let's do gray point, and hit OK. And then refresh our histograms. You can see that now it has a lot of, uh, of banding that is happening. So basically, what that tells us is that um, the sampling actually is less than it was before. So we destroy the image, and so we have less information than before. And you don't want to do that because we don't have a lot of information to begin with. So I'm going to undo that. And to prevent that from happening, we're going to go to mode 32-bit per channel mode. And we can flatten it since we're just using one layer anyways. Um, as you can see, we don't have a histogram anymore. Uh, and what I'm going to do is select an eyedropper tool and drop a pen here so that I can, in my info panel, see exactly what the values are in the RGB color spectrum uh, as I color correct. So we don't have curves, but we do have levels. So Command L to bring my levels panel up. And um, we're going to select the black point and click on something that should be black. Select the white point in something that should be white. And finally, click on the middle point, something that should be gray or neutral. All right. Then here in the output level, so I'm going to reduce it a little bit so that it's not 255 more or less 250, so that it allows a little bit of space there, so that when we change to 8-bit, it actually moves that towards 255, and we use all the spectrum there. So I'm going to uh, reduce the output levels to 250. And then I'm going to go to the, each one of the channels while I am looking here to see if there's still any uh, cast. And as you can see, right now I have a cast towards the red. So this should be this should be uh, equal. This should be neutral. 
So I need a reduced red. So I'm going to come here to the middle one and start moving it. And as I move it, I should remove that cast. I want you to see something. If I actually do that, increase it there, I'm darkening the whole image. And so it's really not helping me that much in the red channel. So I'm going to go to the green channel, move it a little bit. There you go. And then to the blue channel and move it a little bit. There you go. So now I have 252, 252, 252. And so instead of moving the red to match the other two that were set, I actually went and left the red channel as it was and then adjusted the green and blue channel. And then I'm going to hit OK. So, so now our image is actually looking a lot uh, better in terms of black and white points. So we've reduced the cast. And what I, we're going to do is uh, give it uh, better colors. So I'm going to release that. And now change our mode to 16 bits so that actually we can, and uh, of course I could do HDR toning uh, for this. I'm going to just, I'm just going to hit OK here because um, we're not going to be talking about HDR toning today. Um, so now I have this in 16-bit channel, 16-bit uh, per channel. Per, and um, basically, uh, and, and let me just say this before we advance, and the reason why I got an HDR uh, toning panel, it's because it's going from the 32 to the 16, and it's telling me, is, is giving me an option of how I want to compress that so that uh, the result is what I want because that means that I have 32 bits per channel and I'm coming to 16 so I'm discarding lots of information so it's asking me if I want to be selective about that this uh, discard and and so uh, in this tutorial of course I'm not gonna go into detail but I just wanted to say that alrighty so now Command M to bring my curves panel that is available at 16 bit per channel. And uh, what I'm going to do here is that I uh, will be correcting the red, the yellow, and the blue here to make them more saturated. So RGB is not the appropriate way to do it because RGB combines luminosity and color information inside of each one of the channels. So I'm going to hit cancel there, image mode, and then change it to lab. All right, and so if I now go back to my curves, now I have lightness separated from A and B channels, A, red and green, B, blue and yellow. So A, I'm going to increase the steepness of the curve, say by 28 points, B, 28 points. All right, and now I'm going to move closer into the red. So red is in the A channel. And I'm going to identify where this jacket is. And as you can see, as I move this, you can see in the curve where it, the section is located. Let me do it again. There you go. And so I'm going to do that. And that increases the saturation of the red. Uh, now let me go back to my blue channel and let me identify this blue here so you can see where it is and I'm going to make that a little more blue saturated and you can see how it changed and then I'm going to identify this yellow and make it more yellow and that's pretty much it let's hit OK And finally, we're going to change our mode to 8-bit per channel. 
great stuff. If we refresh this, you're going to see that there's no banding. There's actually no spacing in the sampling in our histogram. And our uh, image is color corrected in terms of black and, and white. And also, we have increased the saturation of our colors red, yellow, and blue selectively with lab uh, color spectrum at 16 bit per channel. Alrighty, so I hope that this has been helpful. I know that it's a little bit uh, fast. I didn't go into lots of details. I just wanted to introduce you to the possibility of changing the bit per channel so that you're not uh, affecting the image in a destructive way. So uh, you increase the number of bits per channel and that's going to allow you to play with the information and then when you go back to 8 bit per channel then of course you have lots of information you're discarding it anyways uh, and so by the time that you get back to 8 bit per channel so that you export for the web or you print uh, you're of course going to have lots of information uh, so you're working with a fantastic image to begin with uh, for digital media purposes or whatnot so hopefully this has been helpful if you have any questions or comments just let us know in the YouTube uh, comments box. Again, my name is Alex Centeno with Mercados Interactive Partners. Thank you so much and see you next time.